Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Vandalia by the Way. My name is Rich Hopkins. I'm the communications manager for the city. And on today's program, we've got some really good news and some really not so good news on the economic development front as some new companies are coming into town as one gets ready to depart. But our first stop today is here along North Dixie Drive where the long wait is over. After more than a year's time, a road widening project is officially open for business. This may very well be the dictionary definition of a site for sore eyes. This is what traffic flowing smoothly on Dixie Drive looks like these days, a site many Vandalia drivers fear they might never see again. But after 14 months of work, an ambitious street widening project here on Dixie is finally complete. This project actually took about 14 months. There was a lot of work, probably more than most people understand when they drive by a project. There's a lot of work that goes unnoticed and you don't see it uh, when the project is all completed. But it's uh, very time consuming and we're really happy with the finished product we have here. Public Service Director Rob Cron says the project required a number of steps to complete including building up the earth to accommodate the widening roadway and moving several utility lines. We know the project has been a long time coming to get finished. Um, we would like to thank everyone for their patience through this. I know it seemed like it's, it's been a long time and it has been a long time, but there's nobody happier to see this done than the city is. Drivers should be very pleased as well, as the new and improved Dixie Drive gives us a little more room to operate. When it's all said and done, what we have here is, is two traveling lanes in each direction, plus a turn lane in the middle for, each, for the intersections driveways for people to get out of the way of the moving traffic. As this project wraps up, there are a couple of other road projects that aren't nearly as far along. On National Road by the old Morton Middle School site, crews are working on a streetscape project, installing brick pavers for a walkway, along with new trees and new streetlights, all designed to extend the look and the feel of the National Road Business Corridor. Kron says it's a project that's being managed at the state level. That is a project that is managed by ODOT. Um, there are federal dollars involved and they are handling the project, the inspection and everything. So. Any real concerns, um, we have to go through ODOT first before we can address them with the contractor. Another set of contractors will be moving into Vandalia soon, this time to install a traffic signal. It's going to be up at Northwoods Boulevard and uh, the northbound ramps with I-75. That work should begin here any, any day now. They should be moving in and that project should be completed um, around the first week of December. One last note about the fall months, it's also the time when we're dealing with falling leaves. Kron says the city will be making several sweeps through town to suck up as many of those leaves as they can. If you look at our schedule, we have published on our website and it'll be also be in the Vandalia Drummer. The leaf pickup starts the week of October 12th and it goes through the early part of December. Um, we ask that you do rake your leaves out onto the street. You get them into the street in front of the curb and we'll pick them up along there. And we ask you that you don't put any other materials in with the leaves, any branches or anything like that. The next couple of months will also be busy for builders at the Stone Quarry Crossings development. Work will continue through the fall on the new headquarters for Superior Abrasives. Assistant City Manager Greg Shackelford says the project is starting to take shape. And it's really starting to take the form of what the, the rendering looked like. And if you look at the front of the building, uh, the, the majority of the front of this building is going to be glass enclosed. And uh, th there's going to be an S that stands for superior that's going to be on the front that's, that's made out of essentially the outline of the framing. So uh, very exciting. Um, once again, it's, it's going to be about 85 jobs right out of the chute when they open the doors. Um, originally, they had planned to open, try to open by uh, Christmas, perhaps uh, uh, the holiday season. Um, that could depend on weather and probably uh, likely it would end up being sometime in the first quarter of 2016. The road that will provide access to the Superior Abrasive lot is in the news as well. The city recently extended Fieldstone Way by roughly 500 yards. We were uh, able to get a couple of development grants through the state, uh, uh, one through Jobs Ohio called a 629, and then we also got a grant through ODOT to help fund uh, the extension of Fieldstone Way. As part of this project, uh, the, the back half of, uh, to the west uh, created an opportunity for us to extend Fieldstone Way, 
and that's going to open up about another 20 acres here to the west out towards airport access road so hopefully we're going to continue to grow that and develop that way and uh, and have some pr other potential prospects uh, looking in the next few years the first company to locate at Stone Quarry Crossings is Manufactured Assemblies Corporation, MAC for short. Shackelford says MAC will very soon begin construction on the company's third expansion since moving in in 2008. They're going to put a high bay, uh, really it's more of storage area, onto the west side of the facility. And then maybe perhaps at some point they're going to look to move, make a driveway at the end and they can wrap the trucks around uh, onto the far end. Other economic development construction to talk about includes the work taking place on Webster Street at Stolly Machinery. Shackelford says the company is expanding its Vandalia footprint in the next several months. I think we're probably talking first quarter of 2016 on that one. That's going to be 40 jobs right away and then another 40 in the next two to three years. So it should be 80, uh, maybe 100 plus at some point, uh, about 15,000 square foot expansion. And one other expansion to tell you about, Johnson Electric is adding to its Shoals Drive location one of the two expansions planned in the next couple of years. It's going to end up being about 30,000 square foot expansion uh, when it is finally said and done, but they broke it into two phases. They're um, uh, getting pretty close on the first phase is about 13 to 14,000 square feet, and they'll probably end up bringing in, in a three-year period, they're, they're saying uh, around 100 jobs, so we're probably looking at about half of that in the next year or two, and then depending on when they complete the remainder of the project, they'll probably look to bring in a total of 100 in the next three years. And with all the good news happening, a little bit of not so good news. Molly Corporation, the company that purchased Vandalia's Delphi plant last year, has announced in September it will be moving operations to Dayton. Remainder this year and through 2016 that they'll be transitioning into a location that's down in the city of Dayton. Uh, unfortunately for us, it, it means somewhere roughly around 300 jobs that's going to be leaving the city. So all these other uh, jobs that we're trying to bring in, the, even the five to 25 jobs, you know, they all add up and we're, we're trying to do our best to continue to diversify our, our employment base and, and continue to grow. So, you know, we'll keep our fingers crossed that we've got a few other ones that potentially could shake out in the next few months. Shackelford says the site being vacated should be pretty attractive to a company looking for lots of room, interstate frontage, and an exit ramp in close proximity. Our next stop today is at the Vandalia Division of Police, where officers are already gearing up for one of the biggest nights of the year for the 12 and under set trick or treat. We gear up with first off is safety for children and safety for families traveling through our city and that is by you'll see more officers out. Um, you're going to see us out walking, hopefully out on bike patrol as well. And you'll see more of a presence. The second thing we do is we do we pass out candies. Local businesses are gracious enough to donate and give us that opportunity to purchase the candy. That way we can make those connections with kids, break those barriers down and get to know them a little bit better. Crime Prevention Officer Doug Nagel says mark your calendars. This year's Beggar's Night falls on Saturday, October the 31st. It runs from 6 until 8 in the evening. Nagel, meanwhile, offers some tips for parents. One, to stay with your children and keep an eye on them at all times. And two, is not to let them cross up and down the street the entire time. Is maybe work one side of the street, going house to house, and then cross over together and go down the other side. But don't let them run across. And the other thing is, is also is to check the candy at the end of the day. It's not necessarily under a microscope, but it's going through just taking a look at the packaging, making sure it's not ripped open, making sure it's not tampered with or on holes, and just minor stuff like that, that that can really play a difference in your child's safety. And one last word of advice, Nagel says when picking a costume for your kids, get something light in color or better yet, something with reflective properties. Why? Well, in a word, visibility. They would happen to dart out. I know they get excited that being a father, I understand that that happens. Um, but it's so motorists can see them uh, coming out in the roadway and they can watch them, help keep a better eye on them. Meanwhile, all eyes at the Vandalia Senior Center have been looking at the last remnants of a very successful senior bazaar. The October 3rd bazaar was one of the most successful in the history of the event. Coordinator Tony Williams says that was in large part due to an incredible response from volunteers. And it takes a lot of people to make this bazaar a success. Uh, the first two that come to mind are Sandy Weber and Judy Lauder. They were our co-chairs this year, two brave people. 
I uh, also want to thank the senior club officers, the super sewers that made the quilts, the crafty bloomers that made the floral displays, and the close knits that did lots of crocheting and, and uh, knitting. But we also had workers before the bazaar, during the bazaar, after the bazaar, people that donated money, which we needed to pay for food and other things like that. Uh, people that made food for the candy shop, the bake shop, made food for the lunch that we're serving, and people that donated all kinds of items to Trash and Treasure, to the used books, the puzzles. And I also appreciate my boss, Jeff Crow, because we had a refrigerator that went down on us, and he was able to come up with one very quickly and a bunch of coolers. The Vandalia business community also stepped up to help. Ken's Pharmacy, Hawks Medical Supply, Medigold, Larry Taylor and Bo Townsend Ford, Friendship Village, Crossroads Rehab, Treasures for You, Boutique, and Vandalia Senior Travel. There in total, we have 17 sponsors that come here on a regular basis, and all of them donated either a raffle basket or a door prize. Some of them will be were here on Saturday. We also have 36 businesses in this area that donated to us. William says with the bazaar and the books for another year, she's turning her attention to upcoming events like Veterans Day. But to get ready, I want to line the walls with all the veterans that are associated with our center. It could be a person that's a member here, but also their children, their grandparents, anybody that's their close relatives. I want those pictures and I want to line all the walls up there so we can really appreciate our veterans during November. Another upcoming event happens in this month when senior center members can win fabulous prizes and merchandise just for remembering some basic safety advice. Kim Hanahan from the fire department, she's been coming once a month and have a session each time. Well, October is Fire Prevention Month. So this month, she's kind of wrapping it up with a series of games. And even if you didn't come to those other group classes, come to this. Uh, she is going to play Home Safety Bingo, Fire Trivia, and Jeopardy. And that's going to be on October 29th from 10 to 1130. And one other note from the Senior Center. Vandalia Butler schools are planning a special tailgate party expressly for the senior set. The Vandalia school system is also issuing an invitation to our seniors. They're having a tailgate before the game on October 30th. Um, they're putting up a white tent for us and feeding us. And then anybody wants to go to the game, they're handing over a ticket for that also. And I, they've done that last year also. So this is a repeated tradition. Vandalia's city manager, meanwhile, is trying to get the word out about some issues you will be seeing on the November ballot. Twelve issues, to be exact, all proposed amendments to the city of Vandalia charter. The charter is the city's constitution. It's how we're going to operate so, and, and helps us create the laws under which the city operates as a whole. And so you know, the, the process to to um, amend the city's charter is that uh, back in April, city council appointed a, a five-member charter review committee who reviewed uh, certain areas of the charter with staff. Uh, we looked at some areas that we've had some issues with over the last couple years because the charter is now about 55 years old and needs to be amended from time to time. And so that committee looked at several different issues um, and I eventually came back with 12 recommended changes to the charter that will be on the November 3rd ballot. City Manager John Cruzy says many of the changes proposed in the amendments are needed so that the charter comes in compliance with federal or state law. One good example is the charter's existing language regarding residency requirements. Back in 2006, the state legislature uh, passed a law that prohibited cities from requiring their employees to reside within the city with which they work. Now, our charter has a residency require in it. And so our charter now does not comply with state law and therefore needs to be changed. A change in state law is also behind a proposed amendment regarding emergency measures, council action that's designed to go into effect immediately. There's been a provision in the city charter to allow for emergency legislation since the charter was adopted in 1959. However, due to a recent state or a recent court decision, we need to slightly change that language to bring us into compliance because there are occasions where council needs to take action on matters immediately for you know health safety and welfare of the residents and we just need to bring our our charter into compliance another of the proposed amendments would make it easier for residents to keep tabs with what's happening with city council the way the charter is currently written uh, when council passes or adopts legislation 
uh, we're required to publish a notice of that legislation in a newspaper of general circulation so it appears in the legal ads. Now I'm not sure how many of our residents peruse the legal ad section of the newspaper looking to find out what kind of action the city has taken. Uh, this change would allow us to publish the, those notices on the city's website as well as uh, post those notices in city buildings or public buildings around town that would give our residents greater access to those notices to see what kinds of action city council has taken. And while we're talking about council, one of the proposed changes would slightly change the way a Vandalia resident would file the petitions required to run for city council, setting the number of signatures needed to file to a specific number. Right now the requirement uh, for a council member to get on the ballot is 2% of the, of the signatures of the people that voted in the last election. And so that number fluctuates from requiring 50 signatures to requiring 200 signatures. I think the Charter Committee decided it was better off just to have a set number of signatures that was required rather than a fluctuating number. Cruzy says all 12 of the amendments on the ballot were created to try to make things run more smoothly and that they can all be found on the city's website and in the October City Newsletter at the Crossroads. He says city staff are trying to get the word out on what these amendments will do. What the city's intent was is to educate the public on what the issues are and let them make up their own minds. So we're not, you know, attempting to... to phrase this one way or the other. We're just trying to get the information out on, on the, the purpose of the recommended changes by the committee. And our last note of the day is also dealing with the November elections, specifically all of the signs for candidates or issues that seem to pop up around Election Day. City planner Amber Holloway says folks who want to post campaign signage on private property can do so without much restriction at all. We do not require any fee or permit to erect these temporary political or issue campaign signs which do not convey a commercial message. All that we ask is that these signs are pulled within three days following the election in which they're related. Holloway says there are just a couple of things to remember when posting on private property. Political issue or campaign signs are permitted on any private property within the city of Vandalia, so long as those signs do not obstruct the view of any pedestrian or vehicular traffic. And of course, we ask that you always get the owner's consent to place those signs on private property. The rules do change, meanwhile, when you look to post signage on public property or property in the public right-of-way. We do not allow any posting of any temporary signage on public property, in the right-of-way, or on utility poles. Now, city officials tell us that they understand not every candidate, not every issue supporter is going to be perfect in following the guidelines for campaign sign placement. So what happens if your sign gets pulled? All hope is not lost. We don't throw the signs away. In fact, what we do is put them in the back of a truck and we bring them to our city building. You can swing by at any time you notice a sign is gone. It'll likely be up against this wall. You can pick it up and hopefully next time put it in a better spot. That's going to do it for this edition of Vandalia, by the way. I'm Rich Hopkins. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.